Our guys good to see everybody. Tell the truth Monday. Here we go. Offense, improved rushing attack. We were really pleased with the running of Ty, Ty Davis, improved offensive line blocking. We put in some new stuff. Uh, we put in some new formations. Uh, JP's kept, uh, kept at it, stayed with the run game like we said we're going to, and we made some improvement there. Uh, definitely on, on uh, offense, we still need some work on third down and our pass protection. On defense, it was all about gap fits, about staying out gap, playing with proper technique, uh, put and putting ourselves in better position to adjust to some of the formations that we've seen. We're going to work on that today. Florida, uh, Emory Jones is an outstanding quarterback. Uh, they're uh, third in the country in rushing offense. Uh, I've known Dan for a long time. He's one of the best play callers I've, I've been around. Uh, they got some talent. They got a good offensive line, good stable running backs, a lot of speed at wide receiver on defense. We all know about their defense. Attacking defense, 16 points per game, led by Zachary Carter with six sacks. Any questions? Hey, good afternoon, Coach. Um, I was just curious, in your meetings yesterday with the coaching staff, um, you know, kind of given the limitations of what your roster is and not being able to improve it at this point in time, what can you fix? What, what have you guys identified that this is something we can clearly yeah. focus on and improve upon as we yeah. go forward? You know, uh, on defense, first of all, uh, making sure that we adjust to the proper formation and we're in a great alignment and our eyes on the right keys, number one. Number two is when they're in that proper alignment and key, that they play, they play the gap that they're supposed to. We're getting cut out of a gap that we knew they had a good run game going into the into the um, game. There was no question about that. We respected their offensive line, a good zone blocking team. We just got cut out, out of our gaps for the most part. Now we ran some blitzes. We had some misassignments. We weren't in our gaps. So those are all things that are fixable plus tackling. Hey, good afternoon. What's the status of Kayshawn Butte and Ali Gay now? Yeah, uh, they're not going to be available for this week for sure. Hey, Coach Joe, Garland Gill Fox State, New Orleans. Um, I noticed uh, that AD Scott Woodward's on the road with you uh, on the home games on the field. Is he giving you any words of encouragement, advice in, uh, in these tough times there uh, for the Tigers? Yeah, he's been great. He comes meet me every Sunday. He's here at every practice. Been very positive, uh, been very encouraging every time I met with him. Yeah, hey, Coach, I mean, uh, obviously now without Kayshawn being such a, a huge part of y'all's offense, just mm -hmm. who are you looking to kind of step up in that number one role and kind of who, who do you think is going to stand out there among those Yeah, freshmen? you know, I, it's not about uh, number one role. It's about somebody coming up and uh, making some plays. I, thought, I think you saw Malik Neighbors do a lot of good things there. Uh, I'm looking for him to uh, step up, uh, Devontae Lee to step up in a bigger role, uh, John Trey Kirkland to step up in a bigger role, uh, Jare Jenkins. I think all those guys just have to step up, not just one guy. Everybody has to step up. Hey, Coach, this is Bree Andrews from LSU Tiger TV. We've seen a lot of great success from former running backs coming out of LSU, and I think a big bright side of the game last week was seeing Ty Davis Price run, rush for 147 yards. So do you think not only Ty Davis Price, but Corey Kiner, Armani Goodwin, um, Josh Williams, do you think that they have the ability to be a successful college quarterback and also be successful in the NFL? No question. That's why I recruited them. I think they're all great players. They're all great young men. And I'm glad that we put them in position to have success. We block better. I thought Ty ran with an outstanding attitude. Uh, Corey and uh, Armani are um, a good uh, freshman, real good freshman, and Trey Bradford, who's going to become eligible soon. I think all those guys are, are going to be great players. Hey coach, uh, through the first three weeks of the season, y'all were toward, the defense was towards the top of the country in sacks and tackle for loss. Uh, the last couple of weeks, those numbers have dropped off a lot. What do you kind of attribute that to, and how do you look to improve that? Well, you know, uh, I think. Uh, it depends what kind of protection we're getting. It depends what uh, how we rushing our guys. Sometimes we got our scrambling quarterbacks that we're not just going full tilt. We got to stay in our pass rush lane. I think it's a combination of both. Hey, um, what's the status of uh, Major Burns and Joe Evans this week? And at the same time, how concerning is it to uh, you know just to be beat up defensively right now as you're going against uh, the SEC's best rushing attack? Yeah. Well. Um, Joe's going to be unavailable this week. Major Byrne is unavailable this week. 
Uh, we get Glenn Logan back. I think that Glenn is going to be able to play this week. Glenn played a lot of games for us. So that's going to give us a boost inside. Yeah, and sorry to have with the injury and questions, things like that. But Eli Ricks, is he going to be available this week? Uh, as far as I know. Okay, fair enough. And, yeah, just kind of, you know, with this gauntlet coming up and then to ask question, when you're, when you're this injured and you're coming off a tough stretch, just how hard is that to kind of get the team going or whatnot? Well, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a problem. I mean, we're going to focus in on today, the Tell the Truth Monday. We're going to look at it, and uh, we got Florida coming up now. We're going to be fired up to play Florida. Our guys are going to be fired up. We're going to have a good week of practice. Hey, Coach, obviously there's a lot of talk around the program with the lack of success that you've had this season. Yeah. How will you approach it with your players? I know block out the noise is something that you've used before, but will you specifically address yeah. the remaining six games in your yeah. job status with them? No, not at all. Hmm. No, that, that, that's for me to handle. And uh, nobody's told me about my job status. <laughs> so I'm, I'm having a, any discussion about it. As far as I know, I'm the head coach of the LSU Tigers. Today. That's, all, that's all that matters. Is that the the best and only way you can approach it? No, not really. I mean, like you can go in there and I can read everything you guys can write. I can take about an hour and read all that stuff and then go tell them about it. But I don't, I, I don't listen to all that stuff. You know, the, the best thing for me to do is be very positive. Understand the expectation of LSU. I will say this and I will say it again. No one has to tell me about the LSU expectations. I know them. I was born with them. So I understand. I understand this is not the LSU standard performance. I understand my job. I get it totally. I know exactly where I'm at. And I'm going to go to work as hard as I can today. And don't blink. I promise you, I will not blink for anyone. Thanks, man. Hey, Coach, Paul Goran from CST. Uh, I was wondering if this uh, this week leading up to the Florida game kind of feels like last year, where this is the game that can yeah. kind of change the feeling of everything within the program. Yes, it could. You know, and uh, it could. You know, uh, playing Florida, you know, we just lost lost two big games in a row. And playing Florida, uh, obviously, is a, a rivalry game for LSU. Are we playing at home? Uh, they're a very good football team, and uh, it's going to be a tremendous challenge. But, yes, uh, they, can, they can put at least a little feel good back in the program. And, uh, you know, since this is Max's first full year as a, as a starter, six games in, just kind of how would you evaluate what he's done? What has he done well? What does he kind of need to improve yeah. halfway yeah. through the year now? Well, I think uh, Max is an outstanding quarterback, outstanding young man. Uh, there are some things he's done very well. Uh, there's some things that he can improve on is getting get rid of the ball quicker. Uh, maybe identifying some, uh, early on, identifying some protections and getting them in the right protection at the right time. But overall, I think he's done a very good job. Yeah, yeah, Ron Higgins, Tiger Rag. Uh, how did you, I guess, your, maybe your last year at Ole Miss prepare you for when things don't go well like this to, to handle, uh, handle maybe better than it was handled at Ole Miss? How did that experience yeah. prepare you for when times are tough like this? Yeah, you know, you learn, you learn what not to do. You know, I think that's the big, biggest thing is don't react. Uh, go to work every day, big chest and big eyes, be positive. And uh, I think the players got to feel that. And they feel that about me. They know it. And everybody knows what's going on. We don't need to talk about it. The focus is on beating Florida, and that's what we're going to do. Thanks. How is the, the morale of this team after these two losses, and how much of a fight is it to keep them motivated? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that uh, when you get into the beginning, like like today, every you know it's the first time we see them. You know, the coaches came in yesterday. Everybody was down a little bit, obviously, but as a twenty four hour rule, as as uh, as well as we can, we're gonna put it behind us and look towards Florida. I think it helps that we play in Florida, a rivalry game. Uh, guys going to get up to play in Florida, especially at home. And uh, so I think after today, it should be okay. Hey, Coach. Uh, Steve Moulton, WZZN. Is there any update on Miles Brennan? Yeah, I just talked to him. I, I, he, was, he was in my office before I, I came down here. Uh, nothing new. Uh, he's uh, he's uh, progressing as expected. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be available uh, before the Alabama game that open week or not. That's that's the target date we had uh, we had looked at. Uh, I don't know the status of that yet. Hey, Coach, uh, one other question, a little off topic here. Uh, I'm asking all the coaches or a bunch of the coaches within the program 
about their thoughts on on the transfer portal and uh, yeah. you know, the positives and the negatives yeah. in your mind. Well, I think that uh, the uh, graduate transfers have been excellent to us. Uh, we've done a good job of getting graduate transfers. Uh, the transfer portal can hurt you. Um, obviously, you don't want your players to leave. But uh, sometimes you got to look at all the things that entail why a player left, and sometimes they're out of our control. And for that, we can't do anything about it. But you briefly touched on Emory Jones. I was just curious, of, you know, what kind of progress you've seen him make, um, you know, this season as it's yeah. kind of gone along. And, and what are you expecting from, from their offense? Yeah, well, one thing that Dan does, he knows exactly where to go against defense. I think he's an outstanding play caller. Emory's passing is very, very uh, much improved this year. Uh, they want to run the football with him, but also the deep throws, also the wheel routes, the short passing game. I think his accuracy has improved and his confidence in running the offense. Hey, Coach, good morning. Um, in the past, you've talked about having to re-recruit your roster at the end of the year, and now we're hearing concerns about having to recruit your roster during the year, other teams yeah. trying to poach players and this and that while you're yeah. still in the middle of the year. Is that, is that something that's come up without naming schools? Not that I know of. You know, I, I, no one has told me about it, but sometimes I'm the last one to know. How are, you, how are you handling all this, Coach? I mean, uh, I, I know, you know, uh, you talked about your job status a little bit and whatnot, but uh, hey, Jock, how is it? Jock, excuse me. Are you trying to get another quote for me? Yes, um, no, sir. You sure? I'm just trying to do my job, Coach. Good, good. Well, I'm going to do mine. I'm handling great. I said that before. Thank you, Coach. Hi, Coach. Uh, Leah Van, the advocate. Um, I was just wondering, um, you've had a lot of injuries this season. I'm wondering if you are curious as to what has contributed to the injury prevalence on this team, and yeah. does, that a way, does that impact the way you approach yeah. practice? You know, uh, first of all, not a lot of injuries have occurred in practice. Some of them have. Most of them have been in game-time situations. So we got to look at it. I think that uh, our our training staff does a tremendous job of evaluating our guys. We've gotten guys uh, back here a lot faster than we have uh, in the previous year. So I think that the acceleration of the treatment and um, the guys getting better has, has worked. You don't want injuries, but you know what? It's part of football. Hey, Coach, this is uh, Josh Sidley with uh, Louisiana Ground Football. Um, it seems with the uh, simpl simplification of the playbook, um, <clears throat> you've kind of maybe handcuffed Max's reads with his second and third receiver and kind of um, pinpointed it, maybe um, zoomed in on just one receiver, uh, his initial receiver, and, and tried to uh, just get the ball to one receiver, pushing it downfield. Um, have you noticed that this year at all, or, or am I just blowing this thing out of proportion? Well, what you see in Josh is, him identifying coverages mm -hmm. and us calling a blanket route. And according to coverages, whether it's one high or two high, the route combinations that are best against one high or two high, that's what he's going for right now. Instead of going one, two, three, four across the field, that takes too long and sometimes the protection has gone down. Maybe that's what you're seeing. So if it is that, and I think it is that what you're seeing, that's improvement. Hey, Coach. Um, so I just wanted to know, you know, with all these injuries that we've had this past season, you know, it's kind of completely out of everybody's control when someone gets injured. But what is the mindset of this team? Like the next man up, I know yeah. it was big last year when we had a lot of people out. So what is that mindset? And what is kind of like your game plan going into this week against Florida, such a powerhouse, um, both sides of the ball, one of the best yeah. rushing and best defensive teams we yeah. face. So what is kind of your game plan going into that, considering all the injuries? Well, our offense, our offensive line is probably the healthiest has been, so that's good. And our running backs are healthy, so that's good. Uh, on the defensive line, uh, we got uh, Mason Smith, who we can move back to end if Ali Gay can't play. And then we got Glenn Logan coming in. So Glenn hasn't played, but he started a lot of games for us. So that's going to bolster our defensive line a little bit. But that's a very good question that you have. 
obviously Saturday was the first time Cam Wire was really kind of getting major snaps again. I guess just what what did you notice him kind of opening some things up for that line? I thought he did a very good job of blocking at the point of attack. We ran behind him. He did a tremendous job. Uh, he didn't give up any sacks. Uh, he had a good week of practice last week. Him, both him and Anthony Bradford are playing pretty good. So we're a little bit stronger at left tackle than we've been at the beginning of the season. Uh, I got two questions. One is just kind of general. You can educate me on it. Wheels and screens, are they taking longer to develop and that's why they're not getting called? Mm -hmm. And then secondly, I noticed Mason Smith, you really made it a point to coach Mason, you mm -hmm. know, coming off the field yeah. this past mm -hmm. week. Obviously, you see a lot of potential right. there. Is that just you trying to tap into that? Yeah, I, I think Mason's going to be an All-American there. I think he's going to be a potential first-round draft choice. But, you know, we, we had to move him back inside. And uh, he was getting some different schemes that he hadn't played in a while. And, you know, at defensive end, you're playing the tackle, you're playing the tight end. Now he's playing the guard and the tackle, and he's playing some combination blocks. And I could see some things that could help him out during the game. That's what I was helping him for. And you mentioned just that, like, with Cam Wire on Ty's 30-yard run, like, he and Ed were, like, pulling all the way across the formation. Is that yeah. some stuff that, that pulling uh, linemen – Sort of some new stuff that y'all implemented recently? Yeah, that's some of the stuff I talked about last week. We had some new plays. They're really not new plays. It's stuff that we haven't run, the gap plays, the counter schemes, the power schemes, uh, the tackle pull schemes. I think that's going to help us. It creates different gaps for the uh, defense, different gaps for them to fit, and we're going to continue to do that. Just a yeah. on the wheels and screens. Uh, were you able to – is that something that you see? Is it, Can you run it out of the offense you're running? Yes, we can, and, and we should we should do a better job. For some reason, we haven't had screens. Screens haven't worked very well since I've been here, and I'm a defensive line coach. I'm always preaching running the screen. So, yes, we need we need to continue to work on it. Coach uh, Steve Moulton, WCCN. Now that well, we're kind of on the back half of the season, this is usually where we see uh, some young players who normally don't get to see some playing time. The four game rules certainly, I know, a big part of that. Are there some? Guys uh, on the horizon that are maybe showing you that are deserving of playing time here in the second half of the season? Yeah, we're going to see that, Steve. Uh, obviously, we have not saved anybody for a redshirt year. We haven't even talk, talked about it. Uh, we got a lot of young guys playing on special teams right now. We told them that's the way to make your break, get in special teams and do great, just like the great players before us, like Jamal Adams, Jarvis Landry, and those guys while standing on special teams. So that's what we're using a lot of our true freshmen. Ed, uh, Scott Rabelais with the Advocate. Uh, while, while you've been talking, there's been a report, uh, at least on Twitter, that uh, Keyshawn is out, out for the year. Are you, are you not prepared to say that at this point? And also with, with Miles, um, when he does return, is it back to the same level of competition at quarterback that it was before the season, or Max has established himself yeah. and it, it's a backup starter kind of thing? Yeah, Keyshawn will be out for the year, unavailable for the year. That's that's correct. You know, I, don't, I don't know with Miles. I don't know if Miles is going to be back. I, don't, I really don't know if we're going to get him back at the open date like we thought we would. I'm kind of unsure of that. So we have to play that play by ear as he gets as he gets better. But I don't I don't think he's going to be back to open date. That's my gut. That's my gut feeling. All right, thank you. Thank you. Are we done? Go Tigers.